me stop! Let me out! Stop! No, 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 no! Let me out! Bitch of a car! It's it's it's, it's overwritten my coordinates. It's not going where I. I, I told it to. Oh for God! Oh no 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 I don't know where we're going. I just, I just, I just, I just, I just, oh God, oh God. Suki, Suki, calm down. Are you going to give yourself a heart attack before anything else? And this might be the last words I ever get to speak. I just don't know. I just don't know. Okay. I calm. And breathe. Breathe. You see, I know what this is. This has so many echoes of the, the stories my father told me about what was happening to him. And, and, what happened to his family, and, and why I'm here, and it's, it's entrenched in my DNA and the absolute terror. I've seen this coming for years, for decades. It's a country we just sleepwalking into fascism. For years, the country that I grew up in and I love has been ground down by austerity, force-fed a diet of rubbish and cockroach television and lies. Back in 2021, when they introduced the bill to, to stop people protesting, to effectively squash any dissent. That was when the writing was on the wall. I knew it, and, and so did many others. I'm as much to blame as anybody else. You can't live at that pitch of fear. We, people did fight. We, d we did fight. But then any form of dissent was either ridiculed very effectively, I might say, or crushed viciously until you can't you can't take it anymore you just you just tell yourself no 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 this isn't really happening this isn't really happening it's, it's all you want is a bit of peace and a bit of quiet and you tell yourself no it, it's not as bad as i think it is i'm imagining things i'm just paranoid but it is is real and it's happening now so how did I get here then okay so for many years since I retired I've been living in a beautiful little cottage with many friends actively independently oh yeah the joy of my life two lovely gardens which nurtured and cared for and enjoyed absolutely adored them oh such a lovely place I do miss it until one stupid 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 day me old speedy Suki in her haste goes clambering up into the loft in such a rush I hadn't secured the ladder and the next thing well Next thing, I've woken up in a hospital and I've been in a coma for two days. I've got two fractured legs, and worse yet, I've 
damaged my spine so badly that I am paralyzed from the waist down and I'm going to be confined for the rest of my life to a wheelchair. Not quite what I'd imagine for the rest of my life. And that's when my life started spinning out of my control. I fought so hard. I fought so hard to be allowed to go back to my own home. I said that we could do this and I would manage and I would have people put... Oh God, I just fought and fought. But it... Between my bloody bossy little bitch of a daughter, you know, the kind, career-driven, devoted to the party and loves our leader, her, in combination with the doctors, they would not permit it. And the next thing I know, I am being moved to one of these, what do they call them? Fully automated garden homes for the, I don't know, I suppose the elderly and, and the generally infirm. I have to say, to begin with, it was quite pleasant. I mean, it had the kind of modern cons and, you know, for ease of living that people only dream of. I mean, for example, the things I enjoyed were things like having a chair that when I was going to bed or even in the morning when I was getting up would brush my hair and I love having my hair brushed. Food would appear on the table at the right times and just the sort of things I love. I was encouraged to exercise um, and this was all done by the house. I just, I didn't have to lift a finger. It was all there for me. And I confess I, I did really quite enjoy the that luxury, the, the, the not having to worry about everything, and it, it did have its good sides. But there's a price to be paid for all this, because the house monitored you continuously. It watched, it listened, it monitored your, it monitored your heartbeat, it monitored your all your bodily functions and kept on this bloody sort of ongoing sort of what you call commentary on all these aspects of your life and what it meant and god knows what else no privacy no privacy at all visitors became very few and far between so there i was in this wonderfully easy lifestyle but in many ways, sort of isolated. I, I started to think I was going mad because it felt like the house was punishing me. How can a house punish you? It's mad. But if I didn't eat my dinner, for example, it would be taken away and I wouldn't get another meal that day. If I, say, didn't exercise when the house was you know, said I should, the, the, the heating would either go up or down. And I, I, at first, at first I thought these were all just glitches, you know, things in the system. Let's face it, this is all, I don't know what you call it, digital. I don't even remember what the name is for all this stuff anymore. But it really began to feel personal. It started to build up because it was Misty's for what I was doing against the house. Plus, I was still publishing stuff on, on social media, which clearly it did not like. I started to feel suffocated by it all. And then it got worse. And I not only felt suffocated, but I felt persecuted because one day I look and I can't get into my bank account. I couldn't renew my passport. I couldn't access, I couldn't vote. I couldn't access any of the documentations or systems that I needed to, to function in society. I'd, I'd become a non-person, a prisoner in my own home confined strictly to the house 
the jarring bloody house and the grounds. And that was, oh my God, I, it, I, I felt sick. I felt absolutely sick with it all. I, could, I, I can't describe, you would imagine, wouldn't you, that a house that could do so many wonderful things for you could turn on you like that and that you, you know, you could feel suffocated by your own house. I was. I was. The only saving grace in this awful, horrendous situation I found myself in was that at least I still had access to the grounds, which I really took advantage of. So I obviously went out daily for walks and also I'd met friends. I'd made a few friends while I had been living in this apartment. We rarely ever went into each other's apartments and certainly never discussed anything of importance because who wants to be monitored all the time? Everything that you say, especially if it's questioning what is going on. On one of these walks, I, I well, several of the walks actually, I sort of raised this issue with my friends about, you know, what had been going on with me in the house and how I felt it was punishing me and now I was basically grounded and, and people were reluctant at first but then they started to talk. Many of them would say, would tell me that, you know, and I'd noticed it myself that people didn't seem on the whole to stay there very long um, and then they'd go, they'd be there one day and then they weren't and nobody knew why and nobody spoke about it, which is strange. I'd made friends with Margaret, who was a, a lady I trusted very much and she'd been there for, for a lot longer than many of the others, I don't know quite why, I mean she was certainly an absolute model tenant. She behaved perfectly and never had any problems in her house. Perhaps she was just model, I don't know, but I had lots of money, I, I, can't, I don't quite understand, but she said, she confirmed some of my worst fears actually. She said that when people went and they never came back, that there were rumours of camps, that they were taken to camps somewhere. I can only think of death camps actually. But they didn't come back. They never came back and they were never spoken of again. I started, I, I was absolutely petrified. Then I started to remember about the people around me, where I lived in my own house, who suddenly left, and the houses seemed to be just abandoned. I, and that was starting to get seriously worrying. And I, I couldn't work out, and I spoke to Margaret, and I said, look, do you know, is this an age-related thing, or is it, is it the sort of things I talk about? I, I really don't know. She couldn't reassure me, but all she did confirm was that it was a reality that people did disappear and they were never heard of again. I was beside myself, absolutely beside myself. Your worst nightmare is coming true. So I started thinking and I I had this plan, I thought, well, maybe if I, I, if I take a leaf out of Margaret's book and I behave like the perfectly model citizen, then, and, and kind of the house had just sort of implied that, that if I behaved myself and stopped my silly nonsense, almost, that would seem to be the words, was that I would get some of my privileges back. You know, for example, that I'd be able to go out to the grounds and maybe get some access to my cash. So, that is exactly what I did. Perfect behaviour. I mean, after all, they can't read your thoughts, can they? I was the model of a 
parent. I did everything that was asked of me. I started to write complimentary things about our leader and the party and what it was doing for us all. And complimented, even complimented the house. You know, it sounds mad, doesn't it? Complimenting a house, but it seemed to work. After probably just over a week of this kind of behavior, it was announced that I would in fact get some of my privileges back. I would be able to have some access to my cash and I would be able to leave the house. Oh, I couldn't believe my luck. I could not believe my luck. I could now go outside the grounds and I could go into the town, which meant that I would be able to summon up a, 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 a taxi and, and, and go to safety, to friends that I knew that would keep me safe. So, that's how I find myself in this sort of driving taxi on a journey to God knows where. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea where it's going. But I do know this is not going to end well. <laughs>